Aloha friends! It's Aloha Friday, so I hope you brought along an instrument. I brought along some rhythm sticks. And maybe you decided to bring two things you could click together, like pencils, even though maybe the pencils you use won't work after because the lead might break, so be careful of that if it's a very special pencil. Or maybe you have some kind of instrument, two instruments that you can click. If you don't, you can still use your shaky macaroni, or you can use an egg shaker, you can use your ukulele. Sticks will be very handy during the music video later, though. So I see that some friends are excited for the studio song, and today we get to hang out with the illustrators. Notice there's an S on the end of that, because I am so lucky. I don't just have one illustrator. My book has two illustrators. They're a team. And we get to hang out with Melissa and JW very soon. But first, we are going to sing our Aloha song because Aloha means... Does anyone remember what Aloha means? It for sure means hello. And Aloha is a big word with a lot of meaning, kind of like the word love. So it's a way of saying hello, but it's also a way of saying I care about you and I care about the kindness in the world. Aloha means hello. Aloha means hello. Peacefulness and happiness. Aloha means hello. And aloha is a word used in Hawaii. And that's where Bo is from. Ukuleles were created in Hawaii. Let's sing one more time since it's Aloha Friday. Aloha means hello. Aloha means hello. Peacefulness and happiness. Aloha means hello. Aloha, friends. All right, let's get started. Hello, hello, Emily Arrow. Hello. I'm Emily Arrow, and this is my ukulele named Bo. Can everyone say, Aloha, Bo? Bo is waving hello back. And we need to review a few of our rhythms with our special instruments since it's Aloha Friday. So get your instruments ready. And let's start with this rhythm. A ta, 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 shh. Let's try that on our instruments. One, two, oh, and look at my rhythm sticks. I added a little bit of tape and I added some stamps of, it's bow. Okay, one, Two, here we go. Ta, 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 sh. Try it with me. If you have a shaky instrument, you can go shake, 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 sh. It's kind of like freeze dance, but with rhythm. One, two, here we go. Ta, 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 sh. Again, ta, 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 sh. Ta, 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 sh. Ta, 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 sh. All right, now here's the rhythm that we'll need during the studio song. I bet you remember it from our very first week. Does this look familiar? If you've ever seen this rhythm before, touch your head. Hi, Aaron. All right, let's try ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. One, two, here we go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. With your instruments, here we go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Again, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Again, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. One more, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Now it's time to jam. I'll play bow, you do that rhythm. So you're going to pick a rhythm sticks and tap, tap, tap like this. Pick a rhythm sticks and tap. Same exact thing. I'll say pick up rhythm sticks and tap, tap, 
Thank you to all of you friends for watching and look at some cool notes that I got this week. These are so many friends who've been singing along. You can see in the middle some friends who added bows to their ukulele and their violin. I see some friends who added kind poems into their ukulele's pocket. I see friends playing their ukuleles, making an ukulele out of a Kleenex box. Friends who are listening and watching along, and then some homemade art, which made me feel so special this week. So thank you for sharing those with me. It really makes me feel so supported on the inside to know that you're singing along and you're creating art and writing poems at home. It's really awesome. And speaking of writing poems at home, I wanted to show you what the studio song, the song I wrote about my own book looked like when I was writing it. So when I create songs, I do write them in notebooks, I took it out of the notebook, but I always write in pencil and I make little notes for myself. Sometimes I scratch things out if I don't want those to be part of the song anymore. Sometimes I change my mind. And just like when we've been writing our songs together, I keep track of the words and of the music. All these letters are the chord shapes that I use. And that's how I wrote the song about studio. And the first day that I wrote the song, I wrote it when I saw the illustrations, or the art, created by the Little Friends of Printmaking. So now let's give them a ring, and we can ask them all about the art that they created for the book, and then we'll get to sing along to the song together. All right, so just like always, we're going to sing the If You Can Hear Me song while we give them a ring. So here we go. If you can hear me touch your head, if you can hear me blink your eyes, if you can hear me air high five, High five, and if you can hear me clap three times, clap, clap, clap. Now show me two thumbs up, two thumbs up if you're ready to sing. Imagine there's a book in your hands to read. Open it up, say hello to your friends, cause story time sing along starts again. Now I see my friends, little friends of printmaking, but not everybody can see them yet, so we have to sing one more time until they're on our screen. Here we go. If you can hear me touch your head, if you can hear me blink your eyes, if you can hear me air high five, high five. Oh, that's good timing because I see <laughs> that was the best high five I've ever seen. <laughs> Hello to my friends, the little friends of printmaking. Good morning. <laughs> This is a really exciting day because I really found a magical thing about the number three. And I don't know if Melissa and JW did, but most people don't get two illustrators on their picture books. And I got two illustrators. So there are three people who work on this book. And our book came out on March 3rd. And today is April 3rd. That's when the music video comes out. So I think there's a special, special magic around three people creating a picture book, don't you? <laughs> Get the computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. And we were just sharing about how you are the illustrators of the book. So that means that you created all of the art. And there's another part of illustration that the Little Friends of Printmaking did, which they created the characters too. So they created this little bunny and that's who I feel like I relate with in the story. When I see the bunny, I feel like that's the inside of me and I can relate with the bunny. And then also, can you tell us a little bit about that other little character you added that we can find hiding in the illustrations? Uh, <laughs> 
We love the little ladybug. And how did you get the idea to add the ladybug? We like the books by Richard Scarry, who was an illustrator in the 20th century. And he would always sneak a little gold bug into all of his big pages. And you were supposed to find him. If you knew that he was hiding there from reading all the books, you could always find him. And we thought that would be good because we love his books. But we also wanted to show in the story that you don't have to have the studio to use a studio. So the ladybug visits all the studios and makes art, but it's not it's not his space. Uh, he's just visiting. He's a friend. That makes so much sense. I love that idea. And we've also been discussing all week about studios since some of us are spending more time at home how to kind of find our own and a ladybug is a great example of going with the flow and trying new things in different places. So since a lot of friends maybe are familiar with your work but they've never gotten to meet you, we're going to do the can't say yes and you can't say no game <laughs> so that some friends online can get to know you a little better. So are you ready? Okay, here we go. Little friends of printmaking, do you use paint when you create art? We use a kind of paint. So we use, here are all of our buckets, uh, and we call them ink, but they're very similar to acrylic paint that you can use at home uh, as long as you're not too messy. <laughs> Um, so we don't necessarily use paint, but it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, you already had a not yes or no answer to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? Oh, no, I said yes. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Oh, no, 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 no. And then you said, oh, no. <laughs> That's okay, you get another chance. Here we go. You can't say yes and you can't say no. When you first saw the words for the book Studio, did you have any ideas for the art right away? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but say what you were going to say after yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still counts, you're safe. <laughs> Uh, we immediately thought of what it was like to go to art school and how every studio at art school is completely different. Often they're sort of re a reflection of the teacher that's teaching, like maybe they have plants or maybe they have a radio that they always have on uh, and all the tools and how they would be arranged on like pegboards and how, you know, they'd either be very organized or maybe they'd be very disorganized and how like, it was just always a fun thing to do to go from one, like, ceramics world into sculpture world and how different it was, even though they're doing almost the same thing. Or to go to a printmaking studio, like a screen printing studio, like our studio, in school, our studio is very messy. And then, like, to go into the etching studio, and everything is, like, they draw a line around the tools. So you know what, where, which tool goes where. It's very, very organized. Very organized. Yeah. So we, we like that kind of thing. Yeah, and so the song immediately made us think about these different worlds that we saw, right. which we really like. Right. Cool. Or like a okay. building with like lots of different studios, that all doing different things. Which is a very magical part of the story, being able to kind of look in all these different areas. And I think we're kind of familiar with places like this, especially when we're in elementary school or in kindergarten. Our schools are often very similar to this, and there's something different happening everywhere. Our homes are like that, our libraries are like that. So the whole world can be a studio in a way. Now, I have another, can't say yes and you can't say no, before we sing the song, and then we get a little tour of your studio. So, as friends might know who are watching, when you are the author of a book, you share the words with the illustrator, and then the illustrator runs with it and creates their own work, and then you get to see the work after. And when I got to see their work, there was a little thing that feels like a gift to me in it, because 
there was an ukulele, which they know is my favorite instrument. And I'm wondering if the little friends of printmaking have ever tried playing the ukulele. <laughs> I, we have, you know, Emily graciously uh, gifted us a uh, ukulele, and our cat has been playing. <laughs> But I feel like maybe our cat is a little bit better than we are. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me so happy. It's like the wrong kind of strings. Because cats play with balls of yarn, and now they're playing with ukulele. Oh! Yeah, this is Jack, and he loves to play the ukulele. He plays it with <laughs> That is amazing. Hey, Jack, thanks for playing ukulele with us. And with that, I think Jack is ready to see the music video for Studio, a place for art to start. You'll see the little friends of printmaking in the video. You'll see me at my book celebration here in Portland, Oregon. So here we go, and when we come back, we'll get a little mini tour of some of the things that make the little friends of printmaking studio so special to them. All right, are you guys ready? So excited. Can I we can't say wait. yes or no? <laughs> You're allowed now. Yes and no's can come back. <laughs> okay, here we go. When I hear a song or when I look at art, I wonder about how it was made. I wonder where it starts. I want to see inside their studio The magic place where we can go to make art grow
look at art. I wonder about where it was made. I wonder where it starts. Right. That was so much fun. Sorry. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed that and in the video we got to see a little bit of how Melissa and JW create their art in their studio by using their special kind of paint and I, I don't know the term for it maybe are those called films could you tell us a little bit about how you do printmaking yeah, absolutely so we'll just move this slightly over so you can see a little bit more of our studio so this in the background is actually our stencil that we use to create each different color layer so when we're printing um so when we're printing one of our prints like for example this print right here this has two different stencils so it would have the black top stencil and then it would have the gold now, I could print these stencils in any different color that I wanted. We just chose to print them in black and gold for this. So you could see it would look exactly like that where the black open image on the screen. And then we would pull ink through it using our squeegee. <laughs> <laughs> sharp edge, not too sharp, but a little sharp. And it's, it allows us to push that paint or ink all the way through that open area on our stencil. And we just put a piece of paper underneath it. And that's how we make our prints. Wow, so neat. And then what is that big rack behind you used for? Well, this is where we store all of our prints. Um, so when they're drying, because you know, when you make something with paint or ink, it doesn't dry right away and you don't want to touch it because your fingers will get all dirty. So we place our pieces of paper in here and that allows them to dry and then we can put more color on top. And this is a print that we made based on the, the work that we did in the book. So this is our print studio, which you can see actually looks pretty close to our current print studio. It really does. And when you are creating, do you like to have lots of things on the walls as inspiration? Do you like listening to music? What do you like to do in your space so that you feel inspired? All of those things. So we love to have lots of music playing um, to get inspired, but also just to enjoy while we're, we're working. Uh, and we love to put, uh, put a lot of things on the walls. So you can see we have some of our prints up here in the back and then we have some fun stuff back here uh from friends that we put up too so we love Even to look more special yeah, exactly. okay i have one last question which a lot of friends like to ask me what my favorite snack is when i'm busy in my studio do you have a favorite snack to munch on when you're taking a break uh Every snack is my favorite. <laughs> Just snacks. <laughs> I suppose I like cheese and crackers a lot, but I also really like <laughs> Those are great studio snacks. I really like apples when I'm singing because they help me to stay nice and hydrated. It's a good oh, snack. That's great. Well, this has been so much fun. I've told you thank you a million times, but I want to tell you a million and one because I love your illustrations in my amazing studio picture book debut. It's the best, and I'm so glad that we got to share this together today. Oh, thank you so much, Emily. It was so much fun to work on this with you, and thanks for having us on your live show. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. That was so cool because we got to see inside their studio, which I've always wanted to see. And we even got to find out a little bit about how they created those illustrations. I see some friends commenting farewell to the little friends. And now we have a little bit left before it's time to go. Announcements, announcements, announcements. Next week, 
back in my studio here, we are going to try some of my very favorite songs. We're going to sing some Disney songs. And our episodes will be a little bit shorter because they're going to be sing-along rest breaks for you because I know that a lot of friends are going to be back learning online for school. And I wanted to make sure that we had a really calm time singing some fun songs together. So before it's time to go, let's jam with our Aloha Friday instruments a little bit more together. And just like we've been doing for the freeze dance song, we're instead going to keep our instruments going until I say it's time to freeze. All right, so if you're ready, I need to put the capo on bow. We've talked about the capo before. It makes the instrument sound a little bit higher. Dance like the sun. Alright, so that's what we're going to do since it's Aloha Friday. Even if it's not sunny where you are, but it is sunny where I am. I can see the sun coming in through the window. We're going to imagine that we're dancing like the sun and swaying like a palm tree. And I want to hear your instruments clicking. Click, click, click. Tap, tap, a steady beat. And tap, 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 tap and tap. Have a very relaxing and calm feeling weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Thank you again to the little friends of printmaking for joining us. I hope you love their illustrations. I love them, and it was so fun to see how they create them. And I will see you on Monday. It's time to go, Emily Arrow 